Many researchers throughout history have concluded that there was once an advanced race of humans, which were in worldwide communication with one another. Many methods for building, religious figures, and even legends have managed to cross the oceans of Earth over its long life. But the most compelling evidence for this intelligent and extremely advanced ancient civilization is the alignments discovered in regards to ancient sites. With the use of modern technology, we have unraveled just how vast their knowledge must have been. For example, the Great Pyramid is aligned with Machu Picchu, the Nazca Lines, and Easter Island along a straight line around the center of the Earth, with a margin of error of less than one-tenth of one degree. Other sites of ancient construction that are also within one-tenth of one degree of this line include the capital city of ancient Persia, the ancient capital city of the Indus Valley, the once lost city of Petra, the ancient Sumerian city of Ur, and the temples at Angkor Wat, among many others which are just out of alignment. Many ancient ruins demonstrate that the people who constructed them had a special interest in celestial alignments and mathematics, also that they possessed a spot-on ability of judging geographical accuracies. From north to south, there is no doubt that past civilizations were involved in incredibly complex calculations and architecture. In Giza, for instance, there are many examples of attention to spatial coordinates. The Great Pyramid's faces are aligned with the four cardinal directions almost perfectly. In fact, they are less than 0.2 of a degree off perfect alignment. More and more evidence is also surfacing in regards to the suspected use of power tools. Numerous drill marks have been discovered within ancient sites over the past few years, even including evidence of misstarts from some form of high-powered tool and accidentally split stones apparently from some form of drilling. These discoveries not only confirm a past advanced ancient civilization here on Earth, but insinuates that they were in fact aware of electrical appliance and maybe even an advanced form of travel that we have yet to discover. The floor space of the Great Pyramid of Giza is approximately 3,023 feet and the height is 481 feet. Its measurements represent the northern hemisphere of the Earth on a scale of 1 to 43,200. Though controversial, some interpret this number as exactly 20 times the precessional number of 2,160, representing the precession of the Earth through 20 different zodiac constellations. Interestingly, the ancient Mayan culture was also heavily implicated within the Alignment, a civilization who displayed advanced celestial knowledge, including a deep fascination with the ages of the zodiac, with a life calendar ending around the beginning of Aquarius. Another intriguing alignment is the 6,666-kilometer mystery. The distance between various monuments, Kailash to the North Pole, Kailash to Stonehenge, Egyptian pyramids to the North Pole, Stonehenge to Devil's Tower, Stonehenge to Bermuda Triangle, Bermuda Triangle to Easter Island, and Easter Island to Tazumal are all at a precisely 6,666 kilometer from one another. Just what exactly were these ancient civilizations up to? Rued Island holds an astonishing ancient secret. Located within the Mediterranean, it is the only inhabited island within Syria and we believe was once an awe-inspiring fortress. Having once been protected on all sides, although very little of the wall remains, what is still in existence demonstrates an incredible past civilization's prowess. Like with so many other ancient sites around the world, it was constructed using enormous megalithic blocks, once somehow masterfully placed atop one another. It is unknown whether this wall was created from fear of the seas or possible invaders, but this gigantic wall once enclosed the island completely. Known to the Greeks as Arados, it was renamed Ruad or Aruad by the Templars during the Crusades. How did this ancient civilization complete such structures? There have been numerous individuals of late attempting to explain away many of these enormous megalithic walls and buildings, such as the temples within Baalbek as mere Roman architecture. However, just like the academics they parrot, they conveniently have no logical idea as to how this was done. Relying solely on modern drawings of these events rather than any form of demonstration. 
As we have mentioned on many occasions, it would be a logical strategy to not only adopt such awe-inspiring works of architecture as their own, but also to steal techniques these civilizations would have been capable of and claim them as their invention, such as Roman roads, Roman columns, etc. There are many buildings on our Earth that are, we agree, undoubtedly 2,000 years old. Not only are their constructions documented at length, but their condition also reflects this age. However, with ruins such as the Baalbek temples, and indeed the Wall of Ruad, their condition, along with the inexplicable nature of their construction, is not only indicative of lost knowledge, but subsequently evade current explanation. This reality persists no matter how hard some try to explain them away, as more modern achievements. Yangshan Quarry, Gornea Shoria, the Pregnant Woman, the Colossi of Menman, the list goes on. All these ancient builds incorporate blocks well into the thousands of tons, with countless more lost to history. How these structures were built is a mystery. Yet, if they were indeed completed by our own more modern ancestors, why is this knowledge lost to the eons? Why did these civilizations not continue these miraculous feats of engineering? Why were these supposed capable civilizations not building impenetrable fortresses to protect their flourishing civilizations from possible invaders using these same techniques? We will continue to argue, and we feel, with good reason, that academia, along with many other suspicious individuals, are selling you a fallacy, not only to appear all-knowing, but also to conceal that which they do not understand. Who built the Wall of Ruad, or indeed the many other sites we so often cover? The history of the Earth is yet to be fully unraveled. It is a tale some find highly challenging. We have in the past covered countless incredible and compelling ruins which can be found within Japan, indeed all over the world, upon which we continue to find connecting features which not only suggest there was once a global, ancient, highly advanced civilization, but the chance that these architectural techniques came about at the same time in history, the world over, by coincidence, is so slim that many said features, we feel, can instead only be seen as corroborating evidence of their past existence. Metal clamping techniques, enormous ancient megaliths, false doors, and the as-yet-to-be-fully-understood polygonal masonry techniques have now been discovered the world over, and Japan is of no exception. Along with the polygonal masonry found upon the foundations of many temple sites, there is also the ancient fortresses of Okinawa which also display the same uncanny ability as other sites globally, constructed of seemingly random-shaped stones perfectly placed atop one another. Katsurin Castle, Zakimi Castle, among many other Gusuku castles or ancient fortresses found upon the Ryuku Islands within Japan, all contain this same ancient masonry technique, exhibiting this now lost knowledge and thus lost civilization's know-how. Although many of the sites are claimed as restorations, any explanation as to how this ancient masonry technique was replicated within modern history remains unexplained. We must then presume that the ancient sites which exhibit this lost technique have remained intact for untold millennia and have subsequently been misdated as constructed within known New World antiquities. Found upon such ancient sites, located within Peru, Egypt, Greece, Turkey, Lebanon, even as far as the notoriously remote Easter Island, these sites all exhibiting the same lost masonry technique. How can we continue to take these discoveries for granted, dismissed by academics, simply due to modern paradigm, absent any logical argument to explain or indeed disregard this proof? of a now lost yet once global super civilization having once been responsible. They must continue to rely on the Bering Strait theory of human migration and ignore any site which is indicative of not only earlier construction but matching characteristics with other sites the world over, 
which according to said theory, simply could not have been visited by ancient civilizations, long argued as a feat which ancients were incapable of. The evidence which contradicts these claims, however, can be found still in existence upon these ancient sites. How old are the ancient fortresses of Ryukyu Islands, or indeed the other polygonal sites throughout Japan and the rest of the world? Who were responsible for these incredible sites? We feel simply dismissing the evidence which shows they were the work of the same civilization is not only illogical, but is a great example of the ignorance of mainstream-funded institutes in regard to a possible lost chapter in human history. It is a journey of discovery which we find highly compelling. There are countless submerged and very ancient cities dotted across the oceans of our Earth. Many of these cities all but forgotten until their rediscoveries within the modern era. When attempting to locate these mysterious places, it is beneficial for one to be aware of past sea levels. This, of course, can make the task of locating these submerged cities an awful lot easier. The main consensus is that world sea levels have largely stayed the same since the arrival of Homo sapiens, only really dipping or rising by around 120 meters across the Earth. When discussing these finds, you will, on all but a few exceptions, find yourself within these specific regions. One of the more interesting exceptions to this rule has to be the underwater city which was discovered just off the coast of Cuba a few years ago, a submerged city which sits over 700 meters below the waves. This depth, of course, being far below that which has experienced a breach over the past hundred or so thousand years. A theory that the landmass once rested upon the surface, subsequently being sunk by tectonic activities, was argued. Yet since its exploration as a possibility, it has been found to have not been the case. The results of this investigation strongly indicating that this city and its accompanying landmass somehow remained under the waves for more than a hundred thousand years. Greenville Draper of Florida's International University concluded that it was highly unlikely that such a tectonic event could have occurred, quoted as saying, nothing of this magnitude has been reported ever before, especially from the Mediterranean. Draper's, among many others' analysis, has of course come to conclusions. Conclusions which thankfully appear honest, making them extremely controversial, yet as with other fields of study in life, they are reluctant to reveal the implications of such conclusions. For example, if the research is correct, and judging by the extremely capable people tasked with this undertaking, there is no reason to suspect it is not, then this submerged city has remained submerged for over a hundred thousand years. This gives us two possible alternatives. One that the city predates the arrival of developed man on Earth, according to academically accepted timelines, or two, it reinforces our ever-growing accusations here at Mystery History of a past here on Earth which is unimaginably more ancient than we have been led to believe, a human society which has flourished and regressed on no less than three occasions. It could, of course, be both. There is a possibility that this ancient city was indeed built submerged under the waves by a once highly advanced civilization of Homo sapiens. Yet a more likely scenario, of course, would be that this ancient city was constructed at a time when the Caribbean Sea was a dry basin, and as the sea began to form, it was subsequently submerged. Yet, alas, modern academia readily rejects such a hypothesis. So, if we do not accept this as a likely possibility, then we must conclude that a primitive ancient culture, with primitive stone tools, and certainly no diving equipment, were somehow responsible for the construction of this submerged city, complete with enormous pyramids, on a foundation resting over 700 meters beneath the Caribbean Sea.